Welcome to lesson two of four in this tutorial, covering Fleming's left hand rule. This is the second video in our series of four lessons on the topic of electromagnetism. Here are the key learning objectives for today's lesson. The first is to look at the motor effect, then at Fleming's left hand rule, and then the factors affecting the force on a conductor, and finally, we will link force and flux density. Here are the AQA specification points for today's lesson. Feel free to pause the video now and have a quick read through them before we begin. First, we will look at the motor effect. The motor effect relies on three key things. These are movement, forces and magnetic interaction. When a current passes through a wire, this creates a magnetic field around the wire, as we saw in a previous video. We can then place this wire into another magnetic field, and this will allow the two to interact. When the two magnetic fields interact, they are going to exert forces onto each other. This means that the conductor will exert a force on the field, and the field will exert a force onto the conductor. This is called the motor effect. Since the motor effect exerts a force, it can cause movement of a wire. The force experienced by the wire will be strongest when the wire is placed at 90 degrees to the existing magnetic field, as shown in the diagram here. For AQA exams, you are expected to know that a current carrying a wire in a magnetic field will experience a force, and exactly you need to know how this comes about. Now let's look at Fleming's left hand rule. Each of the factors in the motor effect have a different direction as shown here by the diagram. The letter F stands for force, whilst B represents field and I represents current. If we know two of these variables, we can find out the direction of the third. Let's go through the three variables. As we've said, the first is the force experienced by the wire. The second is magnetic field, and the third is the current in the wire. Fleming's left-hand rule can help us to work out the directions of the variables mentioned on the last slide. To remember it easily, you can use the method shown here, where the thumb represents motion, the first finger represents field, and the second finger represents current. Now let's look at some factors affecting the size of a force on a conductor. There are three main factors that affect the size of a force on a conductor, current, length and magnetic flux density. The larger the current through the conductor, the larger the force will be. Similarly, as the length of the conductor increases, the force will also increase. Finally, the higher the magnetic flux density, the more magnetic field lines there will be and the larger the force on the conductor. Finally, let's cover an equation for force. The definition of force is that it can change the motion of an object if it is unopposed. Force is equal to magnetic flux density multiplied by the current multiplied by the length. This is the short version. And here are the units. Let's try this practice question together to apply what we've just learnt. Pause the video now to have a go at it on your own. The answer is 150 newtons. Let's go through it together, step by step. First, we must get the correct units. When using this equation, you have to be very careful about your units. If you do not convert correctly, you may end up with an answer that is out by a factor of 100 or more. In this case, we need to convert 
from 30,000 milliamps and make it into amps, which would be 30 amps. Similarly, we need to go from 100 centimetres into 1 metre. Now we can substitute in our numbers. Our equation is F is equal to B I L, which is equal to 5 multiplied by 30 multiplied by 1, leaving us with an answer of 150 newtons. We've now covered all the learning objectives for today's lesson. Feel free to skip back through the video and re-watch anything you feel unsure about. We've now completed Lesson 2.